Hey guys, welcome back. In the last lesson, we got up to graphing the three lines on the same set of axes and we were able to identify the X and Y intercept of each line. Now what I want to do is I want to confirm my answers algebraically for each one of these cases here. So how do I do that? Well, before I do that, I just took two regular lines that I made up and I drew them on this x on this xy plane. And I said where is my y intercept for each one and where is my x intercept for each one. So for this line here right there, my y intercept is 0 5 and my x intercept is 3 0. For this purple line right here, my x intercept is -6 0 and my y intercept is positive two, um, excuse me, zero positive two, okay? That means I went nowhere but two up. Great, so what do we notice here? For the y-intercept, my x is zero, five. For the y-intercept, my x is zero, two. So for my y-intercept, my x was zero. That makes sense, these are if a line passed through any of these ticks that I'm making, it would be zero comma a value. My x-intercept on the other hand is three zero and negative six zero. So what does that mean? That means my y is zero for my x-intercept. So for my y-intercept, my x is zero and for my x-intercept, my y is zero. So, how do we find the x and y intercept algebraically? For the x intercept, we're going to set the y equal to 0 and we're going to solve. And for the y intercept, we're going to set the x equals 0 and solve. So, if you need to take down notes, hit the pause button and take down notes. This was the graph from the previous lesson. Okay, before we do anything, I want to find the x and y intercept algebraically if there are any. So I'm going to start with this person right here. For the y-intercept, because that's always the easiest for me, I'm going to set x. First, I'm going to write down the equation. I'm going to set x equal to 0. Great. So y equals negative 2, which is this right here. And for my x-intercept, I'm going to set my y equal to 0. So 0 equals negative x minus 2. You're going to add 2 to both sides. You're going to get, I'm sorry, I'm going to go here. You're going to get 2 equals negative x. You're going to divide by negative 1. And x equals negative 2. And here it is. Okay? So that's what we have to do for that. Now, I'm just going to erase this. So if you need it, once again, just pause or rewatch it. For the next person, y equals 6, what's going to happen in this case, it's very simple. There is no x-intercept because the line y equals 6 is horizontal. And it's this. And this is horizontal. And... We already know there's no x to set equal to 0, so it's just y equals 6 is the y-intercept, and there's no x in, uh, there's no x intercept. For the final one, if we set x equal to 0, we get positive 6 for our y-intercept. And if we set y equal to 0, and you minus 6 to both sides, and then you divide by negative 3, you get x to be positive 2. So x equals 2 is the um, x-intercept, and this is how you find it algebraically, okay? Great. My next part of this problem here says, what is the domain and range of each of the... So let's go back to... Um, sorry. Let's go back to the question. It says, write your interval notation, uh, write in interval notation the domain and range of each line. 
So what I want you to remind yourself is domain is like our X values and range is our Y values. So in this case, for all lines, your domain is all real numbers. What does that mean? Domain, what we like to sometimes think about domain, we think of X values. And for domain, we say it's all the X values except for the ones that make it imaginary or undefined. But linear equations, lines, there's nothing that can mess it up. You can put in any X value and you will get a Y value. So for our lines, the domain is all real numbers. I can put in any X value and I have um, no problem with it. Our range is the Y value, okay? So this is gonna be a little bit different. For this, I have a Y value of this, I have a Y value of this, 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 this. My Y values keep going and going and going. So for the first equation, all real numbers. However, for Y is equal to six, which is this graph here, what is my range? My range is only Y equals six. This line never goes above anything but six. So my range doesn't go above anything but six and it doesn't go below anything but six. You can still input any X value that you want and you'll get a Y. So our domain is all real numbers, but our range is Y equals six. And for our last graph, which is this, look at my range, it just keeps going and going and going. Those are all my Y values. Keeps going and going and going. And my X values, I can put any X and that will work as well. So domain is our X values while range is our Y value. And that's what basically you're going to have to look for when we're discussing um, domain and range. So the only issue is that the question said write it in interval notation. So what I'm gonna to have to do in this case is this line, my domain, is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity and my range will also be from negative infinity to positive infinity. For my second problem, which is this, my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity and my range is just y equals 6. Okay? And for this here it will be exactly the same. And here's my final, final part to this lesson, okay? So find the area of the triangle enclosed by the three lines. So I'm gonna go here. This is gonna be a little tricky, but I think you can, uh, I think some of you will remember it from geometry, hopefully. So what we wanna do in this case is, in order to find the area that's enclosed by these three lines, what I have to do is, First of all, let me get a different color so we can make sure we see it. Okay, let's do blue. You're going to have to draw a rectangle around this. Okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to call this triangle 1 and triangle 2. So what we do is we find the area of the rectangle... And then we're gonna take away the two triangles and that will leave you with the highlighted part. So the area of the triangle is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 units. Therefore, it's gonna be 144 units squared. This area here for, let's do uh, triangle one, is going to be 12 units down and 12 units across, but it's gonna be divided by two. So that's gonna be, so I'm gonna go area of triangle one is going to be 
12 times 12 divided by 2. So that's going to be 72 units squared or squared units. And then triangle 2 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 by 12 divided by 2. Okay, and that's going to be 24. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these two up, okay? And we're going to take it away from 144. So this area here will be 48 because 144 minus 96 will give you 48. And that's how you find the area of this rectangle.